after mistakenly being put live on the PlayStation Store earlier in March and removed again within half an hour, the Stellar Blade demo is now actually finally available for anyone to try. The demo is a one hour-ish slice of the full release, a PlayStation 5 exclusive due on the 26th of April. Not long to wait then, but it does confirm Stellar Blade's credentials as a slick, Unreal Engine 4 action game with Dark Souls elements. It comes from South Korean developer Shift Up too, and perhaps most surprisingly, it's the team's first ever true AAA console project. The polish on show here, on an audiovisual level, is at times astonishing given that fact, in the quality of its character rendering, the combat controls, and the detailing of its Aliens vs Humanity backdrop, there's a lot of breakthroughs all at once for the team here. Yes, a lot of attention has been paid so far in social media circles to the fan service aspects of the character designs. But even subtracting that design choice, on a tech level, Stellar Blade has a lot of quality on show to celebrate, especially so in its cutscenes, which are all rendered in engine on PS5. Stellar Blade has been a long time coming. Originally announced in 2019 under the title Project Eve, it began as a last-gen PS4, Xbox One and PC effort before the transition to pure PS5 development. Looking at the demo today, it's clear there are benefits to a focus on one platform. We get three graphics modes, a performance mode plus a balanced mode, each of which optimized for 60fps gameplay via different approaches to image quality. And meanwhile, the last option is a resolution mode that strives for a pixel-perfect 4K image at a cost of frame rate. So what exactly are the visual trade-offs between each mode on PS5? And which one stands to be the very best way to enjoy Stellar Blade once it arrives in late April? Let's find out. Even as a brief demo, developer Shift Up's use of Unreal Engine technology has a string of standout moments. From the opening explosive battle on a war-torn beach, right on through to a later dilapidated city, many aspects of Stellar Blade's visuals are highly accomplished. For a start, cutscenes put character detail in clear focus. Close-ups of our heroine, Eve, and comrades Lily and Adam are eager to showcase their high-quality skin shaders plus detailed facial animation. Light interacts realistically with their skin, hair, eyes, and even the rubber material on their suits. And there's no shortage of light sources within the scene either. Lit particle effects and transparencies all fill the background during the opening sequence, along with volumetric lighting. In motion, combined with a high-quality bokeh depth of field, the results here could often pass for a modern CG animated feature. Right down to the action choreography and editing, we're getting the deluxe treatment in terms of pure filmic presentation. And in this respect, at least, Stellar Blade is designed to impress. As for gameplay, our attention turns to another key point, the physics. While in control of Eve, so many points of the world and her design are tangible and interactive. Eve's hair, for example, whips around to every turn, along with her necktie and the draping transparent cloth behind her. Enemies decapitate, and in the beach chase set piece, we get object physics for falling debris. We get trees swaying in the wind as airships zoom by overhead, all of which cast dynamic shadows from high on above. The demo is admittedly quite linear in this early segment, but so much of what's on show is at least nicely embellished with movement. It's also to Stellar Blade's credit that the game's combat is actually quite good. It's still too early, I think, to make any fair call on its overall depth, but every enemy has a unique rhythm that demands careful use of parries and dodging. It's a decent challenge. The menus, the UI are clear too, with plenty more abilities to unlock down the line. Beyond that, there are only a few downsides. Textures occasionally look a little bit last gen up close, with low resolution texture maps on rocks. Also, we only get screen space reflections with all its implied limits. There are no ray traced reflections here, in other words, even on the top resolution mode. But besides the linearity of the demo and some rough materials at points, Stellar Blade is undeniably a solid first effort for a AAA console title.
Speaking on the modes, let's go straight for the jugular with frame rate testing. The balanced mode is up first, which is rightly offered as the preferred default option. It's also the most interesting, technically, of the three modes in the game. In a nutshell, the balanced mode aims to give you the best of both worlds with 60 frames per second gameplay and a 4K image. That is 4K, achieved via temporal reconstruction. Either AMD's FSR2 or Unreal Engine's TUAA method are likely in use here, where the actual native resolution is much lower than 4K. In truth, it's a dynamic range of between 1080p and 1440p, with the most typical number coming in at 1296p, and it works well most of the time. Static moments resolve to a much higher quality image here by reconstructing multiple previous frames. The method doesn't always perfectly resolve to a 4K image, and in fact, you'll likely spot the image break up on fine detail. Also, on the first frame of a camera cut, where there are no prior frames to work with, you'll spot the true native pixel structure, but it's undeniably a better and cleaner image for using the reconstruction. To put this into perspective, let's jump to comparisons between all three modes. The performance mode runs at a native 1440p with a conventional upscale. No reconstruction method here, you get 60fps this way, and pixel count show is typically at a true 1440p most of the time too. Lastly, we have the third option on the far right, the resolution mode, which runs at 4K native at 30 frames per second. In this case, 4K is the typical figure based on most counts, though I did spot a minor drop to 2070p in one stress point. For the image quality purist, the resolution mode is a great option, but only if you're able to accept playing at 30fps, which might be a big ask given the timing-sensitive nature of the combat. Honestly though, the resolution targets of all three modes is the only real visual difference. All other settings are identical otherwise, whether it's shadow quality, SSR resolution, textures, or even geometry LODs. All these aspects match up exactly. The main way Stellar Blade scales its frame rate between modes then is through the resolution target, and this has a visible effect on the final image. The ideal image is of course the native 4K one, the resolution mode on right. But assuming you want to keep 60fps in place, you're ultimately left with either the balanced mode or performance mode. Each of these has pros and cons. The performance mode produces a coarser image, it's more prone to visual noise, moiré patterns on complex textures, and pixelation in upscaling from 1440p. The anti-aliasing method on the performance mode is adequate, but pales in comparison to the results of the reconstructed image in the balanced mode. The image there resolves to a much cleaner end result, removing much of the flicker and the noise. Except, there are drawbacks to it on select elements. In the extreme case, again looking at complex fences or meshes, the balanced mode actually adds artifacts of its own. Note the noise spreading across the gaps of the fence here. It's rare to see, but it's a byproduct of the reconstruction's attempt to deal with a visually busy element, and is avoided with the more traditional upscale method of the performance mode. And meanwhile, on the right there, the resolution mode has an easy one-to-one -one scale between its native resolution and the 4K output of the PS5. Again, each mode has its benefits, but my recommendation would still be the balanced mode, as a trade between image quality and 60fps. Speaking on the frame rate, there is actually one more catch worth bearing in mind, in that the balanced mode isn't 100% locked at 60. At multiple points in the demo, there are these minor drops under, between 50 and 60fps. The beach segment has its own issues, just as these alien creatures start piling up ahead, and then later city segments run well into the 50s at points too. But generally, it's at the top 60fps line. Interestingly, the cutscenes are very well optimised for 60fps, as are the boss battles. So really, it's just a handful of areas in the demo that drop under. It's all perfectly within range for VRR compatible displays, but even so, for the rest of us, Hopefully these drops are addressable by the game's final release.
Next along is the performance mode. Image quality takes a hit in avoiding the reconstruction method to 4K, and again, the result is a more visually noisy image in spots. The payoff being that this mode gets you a perfect lock at 60fps. It's easily the smoothest performer of all the modes, and still looks great at a native 1440p. Visual settings are again on par with the balanced mode in Shadows, SSR, and beyond. So, if you're able to accept a hit to image quality, it's a great way to go. I'm glad Shift Up included this option just as a form of backup in case the 50 to 60 FPS range is intolerable to some players in the balanced mode. Across the entire demo, there really isn't much to complain about here. Cutscenes flow at a fluid 60 FPS, as do all the stress points we saw earlier. It's incredibly straightforward in its setup, with 1440p being the typical resolution, and it just goes to show the performance overhead, GPU side, is well managed to keep 60fps in place. We'll see if this holds true in the final game, but so far, so good. Last up is the resolution mode. My gut feeling is that most people will try this mode for a spell, as I did, after using the balanced mode, and then immediately revert back. After all, 30fps is quite a sacrifice for this type of game. Still, it is available if you want to take in the sights. In terms of other visual upgrades, all post effects adjust to the 4K native pixel structure, meaning a finer film grain effect and a more accurate bokeh depth of field. Otherwise though, every setting is identical to the other modes. We're looking at a perfectly locked 30fps too, with no drops, and as an extra plus, it's evenly frame paced. Really, the 4K image and the knock-on benefits to the post effects are the only real reasons to use this option. 30fps motion is a hard pill to swallow for any action game, obviously, and so it's a shame that the opportunity for a high fidelity mode like this is not being used to push for more high-end visual features. Ray traced reflections, GI, or shadows would have added greatly to this mode's appeal. Instead, as it stands, we have a 30fps option with superior image quality, but not all that much more. Between its lavish cutscenes, solid combat, and decent frame rate performance, Stellar Blade is shaping up nicely ahead of its April 26th release. There's sadly no PC release announcement so far, but given that it's a Sony published game and that there is a growing initiative to port its works to PC, it may just be a matter of time. For now though, the turnout for the PS5 demo points to the balanced mode being the best way to play. It's truly the best balance for the overall experience, visually and in performance, and despite some drops into the 50s, it makes sense to keep it selected in the final game. How Stellar Blade looks and runs on its release date is something we'll have to loop back to. It's very possible this demo is an accurate sample of what we'll end up getting, but more optimization wouldn't hurt in its push for 60fps. More to come down the line then. The impression so far is of a very competently built action game, emerging from a studio with huge promise in the console space. But that's all from me today. If you did find this video useful or insightful in any way, feel free to like or subscribe, and don't forget to hit that bell for instant notifications as any new video lands. To get a high quality version of this video, check out our Patreon at digitalfoundry.net, and to get in touch directly, you know where to find me. But from me for now, Thanks for watching.